going on guys it's Jay Jared uh, W4ZXT if you need to know that um, I was going to talk a little bit about satellites uh, what I've kind of been playing with here lately um, don't know if you can see this but what I did is I got a $15 tripod off of Amazon and I've been using my uh, Kenwood THF6A and here is a, uh, a mount for my phone so I can move it around. Uh, I use an app called ISS Detector and uh, that allows me to track and uh, the satellite as it passes and kind of you know tells me uh, which bearing which degree it's coming up and uh, how high it actually is so uh, this is a Moxon we call it the, the Derringer pocket rocket um, basically it's a two element Moxon let me move it in the frame here a little better so it's a, a two element Moxon uh, you got your reflector and your driven element. Um, it works really, really good. So, and then I've got, uh, I don't know if you can see that, if I can tilt it. I've got five elements. It's uh, Moxons on the front. And it's basically made out of uh, PVC, half inch PVC. And these are actually driveway markers. I just cut them. So make it cheap. Um, I fed um, each uh, driver, the one on 2 meter, the one on the uh, Moxon here, so on the uh, 435 megahertz side. Um, basically I have it to where I can I can move it around, like let me get behind it here, so I can move it and then there's a tilt. So on this plate here, uh, my friend Steve K1GMM actually made this, uh, cut this plate for me because all of these tripods have a quarter 20 stud on them. So he sent me a small aluminum plate that was uh, tapped for quarter quarter 20 and it just screwed right on the, uh, the tilt over. And if you get a tripod, you really do want that tilt you know built on this it can also just detach so it's <laughs> if you don't like the, uh, the idea of moving like this you know then you can take it off and actually use it in whichever hand I use it since I'm right-handed I hold it in my left hand so um, I do run a like around the neck I run a uh, an MFJ 916 Bravo. Uh, this is basically a duplexer. It uh, allows me to bring one coax into the radio and two feed line. I mean, two out to the feed line. I've just got them going up the boom. One is uh, soldered to the two meter and one to the 440 um, driver. So. These antennas, I made mine longer. You can cut them right here if you want. So you can literally make this thing a pocket, we call it a pocket rocket. <laughs> so, um, but what this allows me to do is it allows me to go high. If I wanna go really high, I can do this. Um, oh, here goes my radio. but. You know, you can move it, you can change polarity because what happens is the satellite starts to tumble. And when it tumbles, it causes uh, uh, some re really weird polarization shifts. So sometimes you'll, you'll hear the satellite uh, better at this position, and then about 10 seconds later, you may hear it better at this position. Um, sometimes I'll run it this way with the uh, horizontal being two meter and the 440 being vertical, 
Usually all my AO91 passes are like this. Uh, 92, AO92, it's another FM satellite. It is, I call it a twirly bird because I'm out sword fighting in the yard. I'm doing this, this, in between. Um, so remember that when you're working 92. And when it gets close, excuse me, I pick up my radio here. What I have for it is basically the, the lanyard that come with it and I just drop it on top of the uh, the lock to keep this thing from spinning. So um, it's a very simple antenna, a very effective antenna. Recommendations. A digital voice recorder. This is the Olympus uh, Victor November 7000. Um, it actually has a mic in and an ear out so if you want to if you want to use headphones you can do that with this it holds a lot um, it runs off three AAA or two AAA batteries and it lasts forever so um, main thing I wanted to kind of touch base on with a lot of this stuff is I hear people um, they'll tend to hog up a satellite you know so what they'll do is they'll throw their call sign and their grid square out there and then nobody comes back to them, right? So you have other people trying to make contacts and there will be, this happens a lot. So this individual will, will purposely key over top of people while they're trying to exchange information because in this you want grids, right? You're chasing grids, contacts, uh, me personally, when I was trying to work a guy, uh, Hotel Papa 2 Victor X-Ray down in Panama City, <laughs> he kept, he wouldn't shut up. And I finally had to say, look, man, can you please be quiet um, so other people can try to make contacts or complete their, uh, you know, confirm their QSO. So the, what I like to do... Um, like I've said before in another video is is what I like to do is is, is sit back and listen for a minute uh, like right now it's two o'clock in the morning there's was well, three or four people on AO 91 and a really high pass so uh, work the late nights um, through the days it's not bad through the week the weekends is when it it's goes to carnage so um, going back to what I was saying start out listening um, you, you'll hear probably two good stations that you want to contact your, your first initial reaction is going to be to jump in there and try to make that contact right away <laughs> okay um, if you can hold yourself uh, hold yourself because what I like to do is I like to make, when the, when the pass first starts, when it comes over the horizon, I pick two stations that I hear really well, and I listen to them work other people, and then I'll directly go to them, or, you know, one at a time. So one might be Kilo One Golf Mike Mike, and he may work two or three people, and while the satellite is oriented over here at, uh, say, 20 degrees, I'll jump in there and I'll say Kilo One Golf Mike Mike. This is Whiskey Four Zulu X Ray Tango Echo Mike Seven Seven. Uh, he comes back. He confirms it. So I'll shut up. Okay. I'll wait till the especially on an overhead pass or, or like a sixty or something like that. Uh, what you want to do is you want to try to work a, a contact at the beginning, at the middle, and toward the end. I pick out three phases of a satellite pass. Personally, that's what I do. Um, I'll try to work one or two at the beginning. I'll listen, let other people communicate, um, talk, make contacts, get grids. <laughs> I'll work two in the middle if I can, and I'll work two at the end if I can. If there's too many people in there, 
most of the time I'll just try to just listen and learn because you'll learn a lot about the antennas and the, and the satellite, how it's tumbling, how it's uh, spinning. Um, you'll learn about which orientation your antenna works better on. I've noticed uh, with the SO50, one of my favorite satellites, a Saudi sat. Uh, this antenna right here, because of its radiation pattern, um, when I work SO50, that is how I get SO50 right there. Just about 90% of the time. If it's not this way, it's this way right here. And actually tonight I was noticing on AO91 that some of my best passes are right here in this position right here. Uh, just a slight tilt on the left side up. And uh, so both of them are tilted. Um, I've also noticed on AO91 it can be like this. You know, uh, looks like a crosshair and I'll follow it. So... Um, some other satellites, uh, like I was saying before, AO92 is an excellent satellite, but it gets out of control. Um, some of it will be here, some of it will be here, some of it will be here. So if you're going to fix an antenna outside and leave it, you're probably going to struggle a little bit on that satellite, that particular bird. I don't know if it's tumbling uh, so much faster than that or what, but... Uh, Guys, this this folds up to like two feet long. <laughs> so if you uh, you know you want to go hiking or something like that, you can do that. Now this duplexer, it's an MFJ. Uh, basically, it's uh, one side is for you know VHF, and the other side is for UHF. Um, do you need that? No, you don't. You really don't. Does it help? Uh, it helps dramatically. Um, there is a harmonic there, so I've found that, I don't know why I just picked that up, um, if I'm on the 2 meter element and I check it over on the analyzer, then I'm getting a pretty low SWR on the 435 birds on transmit as well, so it will work, um, there, it will probably not work as a fix as effectively as, as having two different feed lines. So remember that. It doesn't take a lot. Um, you don't want laser pointers um, when you're first starting for portable use. You just want something light, something that's comfortable. This antenna, I mean this whole thing right here probably weighs two pounds. That's the tripod and I mean, if I took the radio off, because, you know, I'm holding the radio in my hand, like this right here, and I'm listening. Um, I mean, I want a pound and a half, or something like that, and if this antenna is something you want to build, um, check out K1GMM's YouTube channel. You can cut it off right here and just use it as a, we call it the pocket rocket, because you can literally... It's so short, but it's so effective. Um, actually, there's some th some cases where this antenna is more effective than an aero antenna. The aero antenna is a, a Yagi. It's uh, polarized the same way. Um, the thing about that antenna is you don't have to adjust your polarization as much with the uh, aero antennas. So, I mean, you can turn those things sideways and still get the bird as to where the moxons. You kind of have to play with them a little more, but they they do. <laughs> they're very effective. I mean, they. Uh, I joke about them. I say that they uh, they do kind of belch fire out the front end of them. So, um, like I said, for the Android. Um, ISS detector. There's another one, uh, another AMSAT app for Android that I hear is better. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but iPhone, if you've got an iPhone like I do, um, ISS detector and actually has a camera feature on it so you can actually follow. It'll show you. 
you just point the phone at the uh, satellite and it shows you where it's going. So if it gets out of view or you get um, cluster bombed in your brain from working, there's so many people say you got to pile up, okay? Um, you got like six people calling your grid. Um, normally, I would just pick a couple, maybe three at the tops, instead of working like six or eight people, but not everybody wants to do that. Um, so, <laughs> I'll forget to turn my antenna because I'm busy talking, trying to remember uh, call signs and grids and Doppler shift. Uh, there's a Doppler shift when the antenna starts. It, uh, when it first starts, it's on, it might be 5K K up, maybe 10K up from the original um, frequency that's called for. When it gets dead middle, that's usually what most, um, you know, apps will tell you what the frequencies are. So if you're not hearing anything, um, check your Doppler if it's uh, far away. <laughs> Like SO50, if it's 436, 810, that, that means it's just coming. But the center of that is 146, 795. So um, you'll hear people go off frequency, and it sounds like, you know, they're off frequency. And then uh, try to adjust your receiver if you can. Uh, another thing, too, if you can, is if you got two HTs, I would run one for transmit and one for receive. Especially if you got two feed lines. Uh, I didn't do that here tonight. Um, I just, I mean, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. I don't feel good. It's been a long day. and uh, I just hooked, a, hooked brought this one off of the, uh, off of the charge and hooked it up. So, um, as far as linear satellites, uh, that can be a different story. Uh, like FO29 stuff like that. I've yet to try those with um, Well because I don't have an all band uh, I don't have a VHF UHF radio with sideband just yet and you do need two of them so uh, It's it's better to have a radio to, to listen to yourself on to make sure you're not keying on other people if not, um, listen before you talk. <laughs> it's kind of like a repeater, so uh, you don't want to key on other people or or whatever. And and I've gotten emails where you know I've been extremely loud into the satellite, and uh, that made me feel good. But I try to do it uh, courteously as well. So uh, that's what I got, guys. Just some tips on satellite if you want to get into it. I've only been doing it for maybe a month, um, kind of looking at some different antennas for winter time. Winter time in Kentucky here gets pretty brutal, so um, it'll be something similar to this. Maybe uh, maybe a three element mox on on one uh, boom, and maybe a foot and a half over I'll have the 440 mox ons, and uh, I'll tilt them and turn them with a TV rotator. <laughs> so. Or something similar to that. So, um, appreciate you guys watching. And uh, got the HF Shack back here. So, it's probably going to grow here pretty soon as I bring some uh, VHF sideband stuff into uh, into the shack. And um, hopefully that works out before the snow starts falling here in Kentucky. So, 73s guys, hope to catch you on the satellites. Uh, SO50, AO91, AO92, those are the three popular ones. Uh, AO85, um, eh, it's kind of on its last leg. Uh, don't use it at night time, so <laughs> um, it operates off solar, so you won't get far with it. Um, okay, guys, have a good day.